Emily Breeza, and I'm here to discuss effects of a large-scale social media advertising campaign on holiday travel and COVID-19 infections, a cluster randomized controlled trial. This work is a product of a very large group of collaborators, economists, and also physicians and nurses. Before the pandemic and throughout the pandemic, doctors and nurses are among the most trusted experts in the United States. And this is according to numerous surveys. And many have taken to social media during COVID-19 to encourage public health behaviors, such as masking, social distancing, and vaccination. Our team of physicians, nurses, and economists has shown in prior work that there are promising impacts of video messaging. In online experiments, video rec videos recorded by physicians have been shown to improve knowledge and self-reported behaviors and these positive impacts have looked very similar across racial and political lines. In this paper, we ask, can video messages recorded by trusted healthcare professionals and broadcast through social media influence population level behavior and health? We're going to work with the Facebook platform because the reach of social media is unrivaled in the US. 70% of American adults are on Facebook. Our intervention focuses on one specific public health goal, which was to reduce travel over the Thanksgiving and Christmas holidays in 2020. This is consistent with the CDC guidance uh, against a backdrop of worries that uh, people traveling to see relatives during the Thanksgiving and Christmas holidays would create mixing across regions, large indoor gatherings, which would both spur uh, a tick up in COVID-19 infections. We conducted an intervention where physicians and nurses recorded messages urging viewers to stay safe and stay home. And we disseminated these messages as sponsored content using a Facebook ad campaign. Our goal from the Facebook ad campaign was just to get these messages in front of as many users as possible during the, the period of our campaign in the target geographies. If you were a user in the target geography, you would receive, you would see something uh, like what we have on the right side of the screen um, coming from the Doctors for Coronavirus Prevention Project, which is our group's Facebook page. The text reads, this Thanksgiving, the best way to show your love is to stay home. If you do visit, wear a mask at all times. And that's followed by a video which starts to play automatically. Uh, this one with the cl our collaborator, Marcella Alshan, urging people to stay home for the Thanksgiving holiday. We also have an example from Christmas recorded by one of our nurses. We are nurses and doctors, and this year, as hard as it is, we are staying home for the holidays. I am doing this because I love you, mom and dad. I am Tracy Glushko from Bozeman Health, and I am urging you, don't spread COVID-19. Stay safe, stay home. That video is one example of one of the messages for the Christmas holiday uh, presented by Nurse Glushko from Bozeman, Montana. Our physicians and nurses were from all over the country, from Massachusetts to Maryland to Colorado to Texas and then up to, to Montana. And each was able to give the reason that they were choosing to stay home themselves for the Christmas holiday. So in order to test the efficacy of these videos at the population level, we designed an experiment around the publicly available primary outcomes of interest. So our first outcome of interest, of course, is mobility. Did people actually reduce travel in response to these messages? And second, if we did in fact see a reduction in mobility, was there an impact on COVID-19 cases? Did a decrease in travel cause population level changes to infections? To answer the, the first question, we use the Facebook movement range data, which is publicly available at the county level. Um, it's not available at any smaller granularity due to privacy protections. The COVID-19 cases are also publicly available from state public health websites, and they were available at the zip code level in 13 states, which comprise our sample frame. Given the two different primary outcomes and the two levels of observations for these primary outcomes, we developed a two-stage research design to increase our power on the COVID outcome but also to allow ourselves to detect mobility impacts at the county level. So in the first stage, counties were randomized into high or low intensity. A comparison of high versus low intensity counties permits measurement of mobility impacts of our intervention. And in the second stage, within each county, zip codes were randomized 
to treated versus control. In the high intensity counties, 75% of zip codes were treated. And in the low intensity counties, 25% of zip codes were treated. A comparison of treated versus control zip codes permits measurement of the impacts of the messaging campaign on COVID cases. As I said before, our sample frame are the 820 counties in the 13 US states reporting zip code level COVID data. And a few details on the reach of our campaign. In the Thanksgiving intervention, we launched it on November 14th. About 12 million users saw any study message at least once. And for those that saw a message, they typically saw 2.6 over the course of the campaign. The Christmas intervention was a bit shorter. We didn't launch it until December 17th, but it was more intensive. About 23 million users saw any study message and those seeing a message saw about 3.5 video messages. And these are from a bank of, of many different messages for both Thanksgiving and Christmas. Uh, this is a map um, showing the 13 states that were part of our intervention and the uh, randomization to high versus low intensity counties uh, in, in this particular picture for the Thanksgiving intervention. Turning to our results, the first main outcome that we want to look at is mobility. The goal of the message was, was to get people to stay home, so can we detect any impacts on actual distance traveled or staying home? To do this, we're going to use the Facebook movement range data and primarily the change in movement metric. This metric aggregates data from individual Facebook users and counts the number of 600 square meter spatial tiles each user travels through during a day. And what the graph is plotting are the differences in this metric between high versus low intensity counties day by day. The dashed vertical line is the Thanksgiving holiday. Now, one important thing to note about this data is that it only allows us to look at sending travel, the travel prior to the holiday. It's not well suited for us to measure uh, effects on people coming home. So what we do see is that there's a decrease in travel in the three days prior to the Thanksgiving holiday. When pooled together, this is statistically significant and is about a 0.9 percentage point reduction in travel. We see similar results for the Christmas holiday. This time, the dashed vertical line represents Christmas Eve. And again, we see a decrease in travel in the three days prior to the Christmas holiday as well. And it's a very similar magnitude. The intervention caused about a 1.04 percentage point reduction in travel in the three days prior to the Christmas holiday in high versus low intensity counties. The Facebook movement range data also provides an additional metric, the stay home metric, which measures the fraction of people who only stay in, a, in the same 600 square meter box for the entire day. We find no impacts on that outcome. So it does seem that people were leaving their homes potentially to spend time safely in social distance capacity outside, or they could have been substituting their long distance travel with local uh, uh, holiday celebrations. So therefore, it's really important to be able to look at the COVID case rate data to understand the clinical significance of these results. Turning to that clinical data, um, again, we were able to pull down zip code level data for all of the zip codes in our study. Now, this, these data were updated approximately once a week for the majority of, uh, of zip codes in our sample. And what I'm showing here uh, is data aggregated to the two week frequency. Each dot is a comparison of the treated versus control zip codes, measuring the inverse hyperbolic sign of biweekly COVID cases. Now, the inverse hyperbolic sign function can, can roughly be interpreted as a percent change. The red dots are the, the specific biweekly time period of particular interest for our study. This is the two week period starting five days following each holiday. So what we infer is that the infections that occurred during that two week horizon would be the infections uh, that were contracted during those holiday celebrations. And we see in both the Thanksgiving holiday on the left and the Christmas holiday on the right, 
that those periods start between five and 19 days following the holiday, we do see a statistically significant reduction in COVID cases. And pooling across both the Thanksgiving and the Christmas holidays, we find about a 3.5% reduction in COVID cases in treatment versus control zip codes. The other thing we can do is ask which types of places responded more. Perhaps surprisingly, we find no differences in Democratic versus Republican voting uh, counties as measured by uh, which presidential candidate in the 2020 election that county vo uh, ultimately voted for. And this is despite a backdrop of intense political polarization of COVID-19 public health measures in late 2020. Uh, similarly, we find no differences in the impacts on urban versus rural counties. We do find that the impacts on the COVID-19 infections outcome are smaller in magnitude in counties with high infections at baseline. So the, the treatments seem less effective in places where there's already high local community spread. So just to summarize, there was a widespread concern before both holidays that the heavy travel and mixing households from different regions would increase COVID-19 infections. And we show that a high coverage Facebook ad campaign in which clinicians encourage people to stay home caused Facebook users to reduce travel in the three days prior to each holiday. But we find no impacts on leaving the house. We also find a significant effect on new COVID-19 infections reported by the health authorities in those states five to 19 days after both holidays. And so these results indicate that clinicians can be an effective channel to communicate life-saving information at scale through social media. And, and today, our finding, we believe that our findings have relevance for the ongoing vaccination efforts underway.